Tom, the only other thing I really want to um, touch on tonight. Go on, Rich. Obviously, the the you know the hordes are gonna you know be you know smashing the RW, <laughs> RWB mailbox. Of course, like yeah. they always are. Ah, but yeah. um. Uh, but what I wanted to touch on was the Bulldogs ending up as the premiers. Did that? Oh, they're going to talk about the top five hair. Well, let's okay. Let's, let's do the hair now, yeah. and then we'll end with the Bulldogs. So I think that's a really fitting conclusion. Conclusion. Yeah. Let's. I'll keep it. Sh- I'll keep it short. There's since the draft. There's been a lot of movement in the top five. Well, let me say one thing. Go on. In our last um edition of the top five air if you know for anyone any newbies out there listening to us for the first time mm. the winner the reigning champion is um nick revolt he's, he's who sort of incidentally he's, is your favorite in the competition as well yeah he's, um he's, he's he's sort of you know leader in perpetuity second was josh bruce yep knocking down the door yep i'd go i still think they're one and two are we going to count down from five well, you know Nick Rewalt's going to be one, and Josh Bruce is probably going to be two anyway. And it's also the the appropriateness for the person, like how they can, you know, can they pull it off? And I think Josh, I think Josh Bruce's hair is perfect for Josh Bruce. So that's how I'm sort of. Who's been it. shaking up the top five since the draft? Well, uh, I'm glad you asked, Rich. Uh, I think Josh Battle has a very. Uh, Almost Alex James esque yep. appearance to him, yeah. Both in hair and uh, structure of the head. So he's in the Definitely. top five. Um, I think Ben Long. Uh, his hair, not just suits him, but is very, um, very. He's gonna dashy. gain the respect of the playing list um, from day one. <laughs> if he if he if he attacks the ball as hard as his. Highlights reel suggests he does, and he's kicking goals from all sorts of angles. Then he can have whatever hair he wants, but um, I'd prefer him to keep this kind of hair. Mm-hmm. I think it suits his playing style. Bit yeah. of you know, bit of carefree expression. Yeah, accentuates and his quick movement. Definitely, definitely. In the way that Josh Battle's hair accentuates his you know uh, agility for a big man. So who rounds out the top five after Ray Volt and Bruce? Well, Kobe Stevens maybe three years ago would have. Kobe Stevens now gets no win. One from the archives. Yeah, yeah. So I just think, particularly because he just because he's gone on such a journey with it, (laughs) from where he was when he came to the club. But Maverick Weller rounds out the top five. Oh, so Long and Battle are locked in. Long and Battle are in the top five. Wow. So I'd probably go Long at number five, Weller at four, Battle at three, Bruce at two, the two JBs, and then my favourite hair in the AFL, Nick Rewalt, at number one. Um... So, Rich, you wanted to close on something which I think, I think is worth a very I think Jack Stevens is a bit pissed off he, he's been booted out of the top five. Well, he shouldn't <laughs> have cut his sides so fucking short. So, in conclusion, a lot of, um, as the Saints have been clawing their way back up the ladder sh- slowly but surely the last 12-ish months, a lot of Saints fans in particular have been wanting to compare us to the Bulldogs. Yep. Which I think is a bit amiss, but the Bulldogs clinching the premiership, does that in any way alter how you see the near future for the Saints? Or, you know, give you new optimism? Um, or For me, you get... Yeah. You I've, sound like you've actually... I haven't... <laughs> Go on. For me, I've been really pleased with Richo, but... The one thing I've I've kind of felt sorry for him um, about since he's come to the Saints, or something that's kept kind of rearing its head from time to time, yep. unfortunately, has been that you know every time where our form's kind of taken a dip, particularly into state or what have you. Yep. Um, I always feel like the worst thing that's happened to Richo is the Bulldogs because while we've been 
kind of toiling and, you know, scratching and clawing, you know, to try and improve and just get that little bit better. The Bulldog seems to have just had a sexier brand. They've, you know, snatched the loop, loop beverage off of us. They've, yeah. they've taken Bontempelli when we've taken Jack Billings. Yeah. And it just seems like a, a number of things have just kind of fallen into place for them. And that they've... On top of the fact that they started their rebuild one or two years earlier than us, which it obviously was a couple, helps. It was a couple of years. Um, but I always feel like that the unfortunate thing is that every time... He's under a little bit of pressure. It's the Bulldogs that have made it that little bit worse because, yeah, um, they're just a little bit more advanced than us. But okay, that's kind of diverting off of the no, question no. a little bit. Firstly, that's an interesting thought um, because I think St Kilda and Bulldogs fans have always have always you know they've seen the other as the closest analog. And there's obviously... I sent out a few tweets on the RWB account a few weeks ago about this. Obviously, there's an, any fan will think there's an, exception, an exceptionalism to their club. Because the, the supporting a club is a very personal thing. I mean, even though it's shared with, you know, tens or hundreds of thousands of other people. You know, if, if it really means that much to you, it's a personal thing as well. You remember, you know, you, you associate it with times in your life as well what was, you know, different periods of the club and Nostalgia. what was happening in your... Yeah, and yeah. what was happening in your life or where that came in <clears throat> in your life. Um, and so for people with a, you know, reverence to history and all that kind of thing, the St. Kilda, St. Kilda and the Bulldogs have always been, you know, the two Cinderella clubs and that kind of thing. And and there have been a few, you know, a lot of comparisons, but they're two very... And I said this on Twitter and the on the account a few weeks ago, but they're actually very different clubs as well. The Bulldogs... You know, they had that run of seven losing preliminary finals, but and but they hadn't played... A, they hadn't played in the grand final for 55 years. And whilst the premiership drought was comparable, comparable to St Kilda's, obviously, the time in between was very different. So they had the seven losing preliminary finals. But other than that, they weren't... They did obviously have some leaner times, but not as bleak. I mean, obviously 1989, they always folded. But St Kilda, St Kilda's extremes were always uh, a lot bleaker. And St Kilda's, I think St Kilda fans up until this year always had this, the thing that they held over the Bulldogs was not just the preliminary finals in 09 and 10, but that the highs were higher. So, you know, they actually made the grand final in 97 and then 09 and 10. St Kilda's extremes, you know, they were either, you know, it always ended in heartbreak or however you want to frame it. Mm. You know, it was either St Kilda's finishing on the bottom of the ladder or they're in the news for probably a bunch of the wrong reasons. Or their, you know, premiership fancies, but never quite coming away with it. And even that in itself was dramatic and, you know, all that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Whereas the Bulldogs were just, you know... Meandering. Meandering, you know, there were sort of lower to middle rungs of the ladder and toiling away with a low profile. You know, in a, like, and I said this on Twitter, you're like, like true underdogs, you know, just... Not much to them. Not expected to be anything successful. I think th- I think this year was really interesting because all of a sudden that's been broken and that's something that most St Kilda fans and Bulldogs fans have probably lived with now given that it's 62 years since the Bulldogs premiership and 50 this year since St Kilda's. Most people, that's all, that's all they've known. You know, they're the two clubs with... The two clubs, uh, you know, that came into the competition either from the start or early on that had one premiership and now that's broken. So that sort of dynamic. So, you know, and with the, the way the Bulldogs or the shape, the Bulldogs list is in premiership hangover, notwithstanding, you know, I, I'd fully expect them to be close for the next bunch of years. You know, there's no reason unless they lose the hunger or injuries or whatever it might be, uh, going purely on what the list has shown. There's no reason for them to go away anytime <coughs> soon. <clears throat> Well, 
the angle I was going to come at it from was it did kind of cause me optimism in some ways, not in terms of, you know, I'm not going to put a bet on the Saints to win the flag next year, <laughs> but it was a bit of a win in terms of, um, how do you say it, probably system over talent almost, because Nathan Burke was the most vocal about this, and I'm sure a lot of people also thought this, but... Even though, the, you know, the Bulldogs, you know, had a great run through the finals and I'm not saying they were undeserving winners, but a lot of people, you know, were thinking that it's not exactly a star-studded lineup. You know, Bonds and Pally is a great player, but aside from that, we're talking about a lot of young guys, a lot of guys who are still kind of making their names, but as a collective, they just played really well together and obviously yep. played really well at the right time of the year. And I think um, that just quickly, I think that goes back to Beveridge, Beveridge's reputation for being a really good leader of a group of people on on a more personal uh, level rather than a footballing level. Yeah. He's able to bring the best out of people as opposed to being, you know, master tactician or anything like that. Yeah. Yeah. And so I guess what I'm saying is, you know, we've touched on a fair few of the Saints players, you know, and their shortcomings and... Mm. hopefully they're going to lift their level in the next you know hopefully really soon but hopefully in the next two to three years at least but the Bulldogs showed that you know if you're all on the same page and you know maybe age isn't as big a barrier as a lot of people thought it was yep. particularly with how the game is being played now at yep. such a high speed so there is cause for optimism there that the Saints um can you know cause some more damage next year um beyond what it's on the kind of team sheet, I guess. Yeah, and I think that goes and, beyond just... Yeah. yeah. And I think when you ask the question, I think that aspect goes beyond, you know, in a true footballing sense that theoretically holds up, not just the fact it's the Western Bulldogs who had won one premiership like we had. You know, whatever jumper they were wearing, if it was those 22, then that would... You could make the same case mm. for St Kilda. Well, to put it bluntly... in the short term, anyway. To put it bluntly, and... Obviously, this was half tongue in cheek, but I was exchanging quite a few text messages on Grand Final Day as we were watching the game. Oh, Inci- you're at my house. Incidentally, yeah. right here at your house. <laughs> yeah. Um, I was exchanging quite a few text messages with my brother um, about the game. You know, obviously having a few beers during the game as well. So yep. there was a bit of, um, yeah, mayonnaise put on every <laughs> comment, but. I said to him, you know, there are some real Bush League players out there today. <laughs> and, um, well, just in terms of, you know, who ever thought, you know, Josh Hamling was going to be a yeah. premiership player at the end of the year? Yeah. Biggs. Um, Roberts, Fletcher, Fletcher Roberts, Roberts, he might not be in the league in two years. Um, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, what I'm getting at is, you know... And friend of uh, my brother and RWB contributor, Matthew Brillia. Yeah, yeah, obviously. So, shout out to Fletch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what am I saying? The Saints, I don't know, could be a good year next year. Yeah. Not a premiership year. I'm not... Well, again, a, again, I mean... Uh, I, I mean... Uh, you obvious. know what I'm getting at? Yeah, no, like, I know you're getting it. Uh, totally. Um, and again, this is why... This is sort of what I m- mentioned briefly before. That's why I like this team, because it feels a lot more solid across the board than the last time we went through this process of building from the ground up, where it was led by quite a lot of really obviously talented young guys who would prove to be talented footballers throughout their career. You know, like Rewalt, Del Santo, Goddard, blah, 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 blah. Mm-hmm. But this time it feels a bit more, uh, I don't know, stable or solid or... Whatever the word might be. Well, I mentioned that Mav Weller quote before, and when I initially read it um, this afternoon, not just that quote, but the whole you know article or whatever, check it out on saints.com.au if you've got some time. But, hey, shout um, out to the St Kilda Football Club. <laughs> <laughs> um, when I initially read it, it did remind me that, well, just in reinforced to me that, um, yeah, it does really feel like the bunch of guys have got down there have their head screwed on and this is a credit to Richo and whoever yep. else are down there that they've got their head screwed on properly and they've got their feet on the ground um, in terms of, yeah, knowing that they've got 
you know, knowing that there's an opportunity, but, you know, they've got work to do and um, a lot of people, including me, over the last couple of years um, on the eve of the season have had really bleak expectations about mm. the number of wins we could have. Um, a lot of us even predicting zero wins um, last year. But nevertheless, the team, you know, we're in the bubble to yep. use a Ross Lyon phrase and they just kind of went about their business as they saw fit rather than paying attention to the criticism or the praise and all that sort of stuff. And yeah, reading Mav's comments kind of yep. reinforced that sort of idea to me. Yep. Um, I mean, the on the other hand, I'm sort of... We were talking before we started recording and I said I'm enjoying the opportunity to have a break in the off-season because, you know, uh, we obviously... I mean, it's, it is quite a few years ago now, I guess. But you don't forget what... Not, it is a while. It, it is, is a while, but... Uh, 2011 uh, since we've played September... I'm thinking, and I'm sort of referring more to, you know, 0 9 10. Yeah, yeah. And obviously I'm not saying that that's going to be us next year, but I mean more so in the sense that if you're in the hunt or you feel like, even if you're just a chance of finals, it's a really intense six months or whatever, however long your season ends up being. And we're on the, ideally we're on the cusp of a season, which is, you know, the season that is the beginning, hopefully, of an era that we are making finals consistently. Yeah. And, you know, doing something with that opportunity, with the opportunity that comes with that. The flip side to that is, for how difficult, especially in hindsight, thinking about what happened to that team of last decade and how close they came to winning a premiership without winning one... um, the thing that when we think about, you know, 03 and why we get excited is because we know now that it works to the point that we were playing in grand finals and yeah, finishing yeah. on top of the ladder. We know that now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We don't know that yet with this group. Yeah. And I'm not saying we're not or we are, you know, we just don't know. And so I'm a bit apprehensive because we're sort of getting to the stage where we find out and the idea of it, not that we'll... F- I, you know, we probably won't find out for, you know, we might not find out for a decade if everything goes vaguely right, you know, between five years and a decade, whether this worked or not. But it would be awfully difficult having gone through the last team and what they, what they achieved and didn't achieve. And to go through that again is kind of terrifying. <laughs> and we're sort of getting to that. That kind of sums up the St Kilda fan <laughs> psyche. <laughs> yeah. So... <laughs> It's exciting, obviously. You know, that this team is exciting, yeah. and it's exciting where the club is at as well. But, you know, you're getting to the point where the future that you're... You know, when you get excited about the future... Because the future can be anything, but now we're getting to a point where we know what that will be. Yeah. And, you know, it's going to be, you know, a number of years, ideally, before we know what happened to this group. But we've sort of gone through the whole process before without getting what we wanted. Yep. Yep. And it's kind of... It's a strange feeling to be on the edge of doing that again. Yeah. Yeah. It's the calm before yeah. the possible storm. Exactly. Yeah. Yep. So when I was driving over here, um, I was piecing together in my head properly and it really dawned on me that fact that we hadn't played finals since 2011 really mm. kind of punched me in the face because it's only been in the last literally in the last couple of months when I have had the odd thought about footy because I do kind of just decompress and disconnect from footy after the yeah. premiership week, um, sorry, grand final week. So it's only been, you know, a couple of times in isolation lately that I've actually allowed myself to really think, oh, we could be a finals team next year. Yep. And I do believe we could be, you know, I'm cautiously optimistic, but yep. it hit me on the f- in the face coming over here, you know, it's actually been five years, and when you think of it as five years, um, it's a long time. Yeah, it's half <laughs> um, a decade. And it's two coaches worth. It's yep. um, Richo all of a sudden secrued three years at the Saints. Yeah. Which has gone really quickly. He, know, still, feels like, he still feels like a new coach. Yeah. I think, I think that's kind of what happens, though, when you 
aren't really put through the ringer that much in terms of yep. really critical games and watching the win-loss ledger. Yeah, it's not like he's blown closely. a whole lot of chances or anything like yeah. that. Yeah. So I think part of that is that. And um, yeah, it just really struck me. But yeah, hopefully we're back there next well, year. Well, hopefully this is an omen. But uh, the last, you know, in the way that people talk about this was the our, you know, this group's 2003. Mm. Uh, next year will be seven years since our grand final, our last grand final appearance. And it will be the same amount of time between 1997 and 2004. Yep. So we're sort of tracking on a similar path. Yep. Um, But again, I said this before, but I don't think, I don't know if it'll be a 2004 kind of explosion. No, I would doubt it. Yeah. I'm certainly not expecting it. That was a pretty like special experience as a St. Kilda fan. You know, if it was, again, every club feels they're exceptional, but given St Kilda's history that was just a really it really came out of nowhere it was it was something that hadn't really happened at the mm-hmm. club before mm. and it was also it, was, it wasn't just that season it was just this idea that you know this club was going to be good for a really long time well and they were yeah, to, yeah pretty we, good yeah we were, but we were but yeah I think we're in good hands at the moment with Richo and um, it feels like yeah Richo but no, and also off the field like Finnis and Summers and whoever else is on the board, I don't know. Klim? I don't know. I saw Andrew Thompson the other day. Oh, yeah. Yeah, what is it? Andrew Thompson, Michael Klim, Eric Banner. Is that the board? <laughs> Shane Warne. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I think that that just about wraps it up for 2016. We've actually talked a fair bit about 2017 in the process, but... Yeah. That's just the nature of footy. Mm-hmm. Thanks for having me over, Tom. Thanks for being here, Rich. Good to do another podcast and um, stay tuned to, to the website for plenty more bits and pieces. Um, we're the on new Twitter jumpers. as well. New Jumpers. Um, yeah, there will obviously be a lot of bits and bobs on Twitter leading up to 2017. So, uh, yeah, hopefully we'll catch you on there. And otherwise, uh, yeah, cheers. Cheers. Cheers.